Starting live video. Okay, Facebook. We are gonna do a few tips right now. Uh, there's this push-up challenge thing that I've seen going on. Everyone's doing push-ups. Y'all that are holed up at home quarantining, I want y'all to keep on track working out in some way, shape, or form. Um, if you're doing push-ups, which I know a lot of y'all are, um, so we're talking on this. Uh, but if y'all are doing push-ups, I have a few key tips for y'all that can help y'all do them better, okay? So one first one is going to be, if you're doing them uh, anywhere, whether it's on the floor or elevated, which I'll get to here in a second, we want to make sure that you're not doing this crazy neck thing, okay? So what that's going to look like is basically like letting your neck crane forward, okay, or keeping it here or moving it as you're doing push-ups or whatever. You want to stay neutral. So that basically means the analogy that I've always used is you can take your fist or pretend you have a grapefruit or an, an orange, place it here between your clavicle and your chin, and you don't want to squish it or drop it. So you're just going to keep your chin or your neck neutral. as you hammer out those bad boys. Okay, good tip, yes, cameraman? Yes, Okay. excellent. So look. I'm next, staying six next, feet away. <laughs> so that, that has to do with kind of our spinal alignment and arrangement and all that good stuff. Second one that has to do with the same kind of thing, we're gonna talk more about uh, pelvic alignment. So I know I'm wearing kind of a baggy shirt here, but in a normal push-up, we wanna to try to keep the pelvis from dumping forward. So I'm a good example, because I tend to wanna to dump forward. You don't want to just hang out here. So you can see how I'm kind of sagging versus being here, okay? When you sag through the hips, it pulls everything else kind of into a, a shitty position, pardon my French. But when you keep the pelvis neutral, so I'm thinking about taking myself and instead of being dumped forward here, I'm going like this, okay? My abs are on, I can feel my glutes tighten up. We're keeping that the whole time. So I'm kind of in a, what I call a hollow body position or what I refer to as, as I do my push-ups, instead of being kind of here, or, you know, that feels really weird too. So it's kind of a happy medium and holding that kind of plank position the whole time. Okay, so that's your second tip. Third tip, let's move Mosey over here. I'm gonna grab a barbell. Hi, Rochelle. Oh, Rochelle's on. Yeah. Michelle, we miss you. I know. Beer soon. Okay, so look. Most people, especially women, not to pick on the chicks because I love y'all. Most women can't do push-ups on the ground. Um, I've been training people for almost 25 years this May. Crazy. But I can honestly say that in that time span, it's very rare that I have a client that can do actual push-ups on the floor. It's just really hard. Same thing goes for pull-ups. It's just one of those exercises for women that it tends to be a little bit more challenging. Not to say that you can't get there because you obviously can, but a way to get there is to start with your hands on an elevated surface and then gradually work your way down to where your body is parallel with the floor. Okay, not that complicated. So what I like to do in here, just using myself as an example, is I like to set up a bar and a rack at hip height, okay, so you can adjust that. That's a, a tad lower than my actual uh, hip there, but you'll get the picture. And then from there, we can kind of, we can measure how far progress is being made by bringing that height down. And eventually, like I said, to the floor. So everything that applies to doing push-ups on the floor is going to apply to doing them with your hands elevated. So hands basically just right outside shoulder width. Um, you can also use a countertop at home. I know a lot of y'all don't have this. So a countertop at home is a great um, option. Um, shout out to Ellen Bush when I was training her at her house. Aww. Bathroom countertop upstairs was like the perfect height. Um, I think Lindsay Simeon said her countertop in her kitchen for push-ups. Um, everyone's got a countertop of some sort. So with a barbell in here, we can really activate the grip and kind of set the shoulders. But when you're doing uh, these on a countertop, you can do the same thing. So you can just pretend you want to actively grip no matter what the surface is. So um, when I say that, I basically mean that you're pretending that you're squeezing whatever that surface is. And in a sense, when you do that, it'll pull your shoulders into external rotation, which is important. 
is it because it's going to set everything in a stronger position. So we essentially want to hold the body in a nice straight position. So remember that hollow body kind of position in planking. And then you're going to think about pulling your chest towards the, in this case, bar or at home countertop edge. Okay, rather than just dropping towards it, you're thinking of pulling your body towards it. So we're using your back muscles. So the lats and the upper back, which are super important on every exercise that you do. So yeah, pull that, the body down. I was gonna say that helped me when I thought about pulling myself towards. It's such a good way to think about it. That concept, it's a great way to conceptualize the push up because a lot of times we just think about the push itself, which yes, that's important. But how do we get down to that position from which we push, right? So we're pulling ourselves down into position and then pressing back up. Same thing goes for bench press. Same thing goes for dumbbell bench press. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a we, really, really good way. Can we say hi to Riley real quick? Oh, Riley. What's up? <laughs> and everyone else. I want to but... see some push-ups from Riley. We, I need a video from Riley oh, doing push-ups. Oh, yes. That would make my day. Um, so, okay. Without turning this into a <laughs> huge, long video, I could. Lord knows I could. We'll be back Does later. anyone have any questions or ideas or any comments while you got me here? Because I'll probably shoot more of these over this quarantine period. Brent said he has a countertop, so okay. that's good. Good. <laughs> Everyone's saying hello. Okay. Hi. I love y'all. Oh, wait. Bobo. Oh, yeah. We got to do a lot of live videos of Bobins. Oh. Bobo, do you have any tips during these Bobo. trying times? What are your tips? He says, stay calm and love one another and life will be better and back to normal soon. Right? Oh, uh, Brent said, show us a feet elevated push up. Mm, that's just me. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Okay. So, in here we use, these are valve covers valve boxes that go over your irrigation system. Yeah, Amazon, $26, yeah. 12 inches. When you stack them, they go up, it, it adds three inches. Those so are good for step ups yeah. and stuff. Instead of buying a shit ton of these, this is a lot better option in my opinion. Um, so if we're doing feet elevated, that's a great question. For those of y'all that are super beasts out there, we go feet elevated, everything that applies to a regular push up on the floor or hands elevated applies here too, okay? We're just taking the body and basically adjusting. So what you can conceptualize is that with the hands elevated, it's the easiest. Going to parallel is, you know, medi medium. Feet elevated would make it harder. So we're kind of going in that little kind of spectrum right there, body position. So we're essentially just taking the body and adjusting it and putting it in a different angle. So everything that applies to a regular push-up applies here. Um, so, when we go to a, a feet elevated position, it makes it, it, it shifts the emphasis a little bit more to the anterior delts. And we also, I mean, you can take that as far as like, if I elevated my feet further and further and further, it would become a handstand. Right, a handstand yeah. push up. Okay. Yeah. So the cool thing about that, I'll show you th two things. So Brent gets extra kudos for this one. <laughs> so everything that applies to regular push ups. So I'm in a hollow position. I'm protracting my scapula, so that means I'm not like doing this, right? So you can see how if I do that, it sags the rest of my body. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing away from the floor the whole time. So here too, I'm thinking about pulling my body down to the floor and then pressing back up. Okay? So what we can also do, I'll make the box a little bit higher. Way to go, Brent. And let's hope I don't like <laughs> face plant. So we can do, if you're wanting to work on like a, a handstand push up, I do them against the wall. Um, I do them strict and I also do them kipping. But a nice little bridge between a regular push up and a handstand push up is what I call a, a piked push up with your feet on the box. So you'll take a little bit higher box because what we're trying to do is put you more into a handstand position. So that's gonna shift you more vertical. So you're gonna get your butt up in the air. Oy. 
Also, I gotta get up a shout out to. You got the hat. Oh. Stephanie Fowler with Empower House in Oklahoma. So, this hat might fall off as I'm doing these, but I'm gonna try to get myself in a pike position here and then from here. Oh. You see how that works? Looks painful. Okay, so it's obviously a little bit more complicated than a regular push up. We're um, going vertically versus yeah. a horizontal Oop. press. Oops. Um, yeah. That's another stupid human trick. Let's see, what did Rochelle say? It went away. Oh, darn. I think she was saying, like, the. Say it again. I don't know how to scroll through the feed. Oh, it's okay. She said arms on the ground. I think she said uh, 45 degree. Yeah, from something. the body. So that's a good question. That's She's requesting good. nerdy stuff. Okay, so yeah. And I was going to say this actually. Rochelle and I are like mm, over here. When you do a push up, you don't want to flare your elbows out. Okay. Okay, so when you walk oh, yeah. in, same thing goes for bench press, same thing goes for a dumbbell press, whatever. Because we don't want to impinge the shoulder and dump the shoulder forward into internal rotation. So when you. Activate the grip. So on the ground, you think about gripping the ground with your hands. We're going to basically take the shoulders here. Okay, so then from there, when you go to the press position, you'll get into a 45 degree angle of the humerus with the shoulder. Okay, but if we didn't pull that there, you can see how it's easier to kind of just shrug up and dump here. Mm -hmm. But that's a, yeah, that's a great thing for her to point out because she obviously knows that um because she's a super nerd <laughs> but yeah like if you activate the grip set the shoulders into external rotation and then hold that as you're pressing it's a nice safe sound stable position for that entire shoulder complex uh -huh. um and then also too just making sure that you're not you never want to try to like retract the scapula and put it in this protracted position once you press up in a push-up is a nice safe stable position when you bench press you're not going to bench press and go here right because you're holding this but that's a whole other video altogether yeah we could talk about bench press for hours so maybe we will we might <laughs> by the end of this quarantine y'all might have like a year's worth of free content yeah certified trainers so. yeah so okay anything else um we had a good i don't know hi cammy oh what's up we're just working out for y'all. <laughs> Nothing else to do. Yeah, like yeah. Rochelle said, cue elbow position, like pulling elbows back, right? Mm -hmm. 45 degree angle. Okay. She must have typed that yeah. as you were. So everything, I mean, essentially, if you just picture me in standing, okay, neutral. This is neutral. My abs are on. So like, you can see how like if I just stand here and don't think about it, I dump into anterior tilt with my pelvis. But if I think about it, that's neutral for me. So I tuck my hips under just a slight, it's a posterior tilt, but you want to hold all that while this is steady too. And then we're just pressing. I mean, if you simplify things a lot, that's really all you're doing when you do a push up. There's nothing, we're not twerking or whatever, you know? <laughs> Chin twerking. Darn. <laughs> Chin twerk. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good? Okay. And we're out. Yay. Bye, guys.